Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a current favorites type of situation. Today's video is about things that I've been liking, the um, kind of items that I finished this past month. It's a huge amount, I need to get through it so that I can then do my yearly empties and uh, a bit of an update on a few other things that I've had. It's weird to do a December favorites in the sense that we're all preparing to do yearly favorites and uh, I would still like to talk about the items that I love the most in the last few uh, weeks or the last month. So I think that is where this video fits in and in my usual monthly roundups I also update you on uh, products that I've been trying out and uh, show you my empties. So this is what we're gonna do today, a monthly roundup in the towards the end of the month that is also maybe not things that can end up in my yearly favorites because I've only just started using them. And that's mainly actually the thing that is uh, uh, happening this time. So without further ado, let's get started with my favorites for the last month. All new things, mostly new things, not all of them, but uh, I have been loving the Lorac Pro Noir palette. I bought this in uh, November um, with just before Black Friday with a bit of a sale and I've used it today as well and it's just good. The mattes, the Lorac mattes are just blendable and pigmented and they're really nice. The only thing I must say is that this one that looks very red is what I'm wearing on the outer corner of my eye. It doesn't look really red. Then I applied a red shimmer from uh, Metropolis and then I applied this um, white, what looks like a white shade on top of that and in my inner corner. It's a nice duochrome with a cool sheen to it. It's uh, a more of a topper shade as well. So I've been liking this one, actually using it more than I expect, not necessarily to do complete looks, but at least to do a base matte uh, for any special shade that uh, I want to put on my lid, whether it's from Glam Shop or um, Temtenu, Cardavina, whatever. Um, that has been definitely something that has stood out to me this month. And same is the Nabla Two Reasons blush lightweight clean. Blah, blah, blah. Same with the Nabla Two Reasons cheek duo. Um, I've talked about this now multiple times, but this cheek color is so beautiful. Like the effect of it on the skin is so natural and um, I was at Mariam's and brought this one for her to try and we compared swatches of this one versus the new Natasha Denona face palette and to be honest to me this one looks much more natural like it's really your skin with some color uh, compared to the Natasha Denona. The finish of this is very unique and I've never had anything that works like this before. So I'm really happy with it. I will forever complain about this balm. I don't, I don't get it. It's a bomb type of highlighter, I guess. But it's useless to me. I said so. I just want two colors. Like a terracotta and a nude, maybe. So, yeah. This, this one is uh, definitely up there. Loved it. And I can see myself loving it even more the rest of the year. Another blush that I keep reaching for, and it's mainly for the color, I suspect, is the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blush. I have the shade Dante's Dream, which is this warm rose, I don't know. I'm gonna show you why I hate the packaging. Like, it's the, the product in itself is very thick, and you have to press super hard to get anything out. And this is enough, eh, usually, to do my face, and then I also have some leftover. But the shade is just so beautiful and it wears really well and it, it blends really nicely on the skin. Um, it's a beautiful flushed color. And she hasn't had them on the website since they sold out or since the launch. Um, I wonder if she's really reformulating or changing the packaging. Because with this type of formula, it's so thick that I don't see anything else than to press it in a little pan, like the Nabla ones, but then they're quite uh, thin for that. So I don't know what she's gonna do, whether whoop, she's gonna reformulate or uh, ch just change the packaging and keep the formula. But I keep reaching for it, so it's worth talking about, I guess. Now let's move on to lips. Um, something that I can keep reaching for, especially once the 
light goes down, the weather goes a little bit colder and rainier is the Pat McGrath lipstick in the shade Flash 3. This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous lipstick. It's my perfect work lipstick. I feel elegant yet like boss girl and uh, just I feel really good about myself when I wear it. It looks good on me, it gives me the depth that I need yet it's not a uh, brown or uh, a red. It's it's a deep nude. I really really like this. I would love if um, she'd bring out more flesh shades in the matte trans formula. I've also been a little bit thinking this year uh, about different uh, lipstick formulas and I really do think this is one of my favorite lipstick formulas ever. Another lipstick that I have been loving um, is uh, Lisa Eldridge Affair. I decluttered my other two Lisa Eldridge uh, lipsticks. I had Jazz and Cinnabar. Because I found the colors not to be unique enough in my collection to justify the price of this, and this is not my favorite formula. I do prefer the MAC matte formula to this one, um, but this color is so good. In my first impressions video, or my swatch video rather, but it was also first impression, it was the first time I put this one on in that video, um, I was quite thrown aback by how light it is and it was because I was I just had Cinnabar on before that and that's like a deep terracotta burnt orange type of shade and that suits me better but this nude going on nudes this is one of the best nudes I have and I really really like the color it's like a warm nude with there's some pink in it but it's mainly a warm nude so really really love that one and um, my hand is stained. <laughs> Three more lipsticks. I'm not gonna swatch these because I, I keep swatching them in every video I talk about uh, I talk about these in and I don't think that was English. These are the MAC Powder Kiss Liquid Lipsticks. I'm surprised about how much I like these. Um, the regular Powder Kiss are nice but these have more pigmentation and I find that um, yeah, the liquid, liquidized formula is nicer than the bullet formula for these. And I have the shade Over the Taupe, which is a warm nude. Fashion Emergency, which is like an off red. I have it in a recent video. And uh, Pretty, Pretty Pleats, which is like a deep brownie red. Um, all colors that suit me well. Uh, also, Over the Taupe is a really, really good nude for me. Um, actually, I want to compare it to Affair. Too bad I just removed that swatch. I think Affair is still warmer than Over the Taupe and brighter and lighter, yeah. So uh, here you have Affair and here you have Over the Taupe. Yeah, I love them both. Really, really good uh, nudes on me and uh, I'm surprised about how much I like the Powder Kiss Liquid Formula. So much so that after buying one, I bought two more during the Black Friday sale. In the same um, kind of color family as Flesh 3, for example, I have been wearing this nail polish like crazy. This is Essie Angora Cardi. It's a classic for like November, end of fall. And uh, I always pull it out. And I've worn this like multiple times. And I usually have, so I have a lot of nail polish and I usually don't really end up wearing the same color after each other or in the same week. And I did with this one because it just gives me the cozy feeling. And um, now I'm in Christmas mode. I still need to do my nails. Uh, this is just a base coat uh, that I put on. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was such a really, really good uh, nail polish that I used a lot, especially in November, end of November. And uh, uh, before the Christmas spirit kicked in, let's say, for me. That took a while, actually, for me. So, uh, big favorite for this month was Angora Cardi by uh, Essie. I have on my wish list Bahama Mama, and I feel like it's a little bit of a deeper and more saturated version of this. Let me know if you have them both, which one of the two you like most. More new purchases that are in my favorite, the NARS concealer. I have it on today with the uh, Fenty Skin Tint and the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. 
I made a mix of things, you guys. But I went on with the NARS uh, Soft Matte Creamy Concealer uh, under my eyes to spot conceal. I have a nice unicorn here that is healing. And I used two different brushes to achieve two different effects. I went with this thicker one and, and denser one to um, cover imperfections. And with the fluffy one, under my eyes, around my nose, just to add a little bit of coverage where I need it. And it has a soft matte finish that I really like. And I'm just overall so happy to have bought it. It has changed my makeup game, it really has. And I think the trick with this one is to use very light layers because I have a feeling that if you uh, over apply it, it can look cakey, but I haven't managed because, uh, yeah, I know, I don't know. The first way I thought of using it was with a fluffy brush and it helps that Katie Jane Hughes uses it like that all the time. It's not a deal of my bag, we say, flower from my bag in Italian. <laughs> but really, really love this. I was not expecting to love it as much as I do. I'm really happy I spent the money for it. It's not only a, a cheap uh, concealer, so to say. And then final favorites for this video are my Raffer brushes. I didn't expect to love them so much and it's pretty much the only brushes that I use and now I want to change all of my brushes for these ones. Maybe. The thing is, they're so, so soft for being natural hair brushes and they pick up the right amount of product. And I've been like, I, I've been having these Zoeva 227, um, at least I have one or two of them that are 10 years old, I wanna say. They're very old. One of the first, not 10, eight years old. One of the first brushes that I have. And as much as they've been holding on, they're a bit scratchy. So I could retire those and just invest into rougher, but I first want to uh, wash them and um, and see a few times and see how they, they go because uh, yeah, they're expensive. they are 12, I, I bought them 50% off each so they're 12 euros each um instead of a uh, full price but it's more expensive than a zoeva brush let's say i have only one uh update uh for you and it's my color pop palette i have recently posted my rearranging of this palette because this is not the original it's a mood this is something i made from uh, different palettes, uh, different ColourPop palettes in my collection. I'll link the video and you can go check it out if you are interested. But I must say and report back that I have been using this one more than It's a Mood. Um, I like that it has a range of neutrals in different undertone. I like that it has um, these deeper shades. I haven't touched the purples, to be honest. I Actually, I haven't touched this line, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying having this one made like this. It is my perfect, is it my perfect palette? No. And, um, yeah, I'll use it as long as I enjoy it. I might go back to putting all the pans into the other palettes and decluttering them, to be honest, because there's so many other, um, eyeshadows that I've been enjoying more, uh, in the past few months, but I am, I found a way to use this palette. It works. And rearranging it for yourself works. Now I've been rumbling on a ton and my nose is just getting stuffy, stuffy and stuffy. It's the joys of having a baby in daycare. But let's quickly go through my empties. Talking about baby, I finished her first bath fluid and um, this one was a gift during the baby shower from a friend of mine that I met on the internet via our blogs Daphne and um, I love this you can get it on Echo Verde it's a Nebbiolina um, bath baby bath body and hair fluid and this one is organic I loved it and the smell is of like a sweet candy and I would repurchase once I finish the other things that I got as a gift for myself, I finished the Aussie 3 Minute Miracle Moisture Deep Treatment. I was using this one um, in combination with the Joico K-Pack Conditioner because this one gave me moisture and helped to detangle so, so well. I really like this uh, in terms of texture and performance, but the smell of it, it's such a sweet... It's not a nice sweet candy like the baby one. This is like a sickly bubblegum type of scent. I hate the scent of this. I wonder if all of the Aussie products smell like that. If you have tried them, 
could you let me know because then I will not purchase them but I really like the what is the, the formula I just hate the scent I also finished my Joico K Buck color therapy shampoo my favorite shampoo for colored hair I color my hair red it goes out really quickly so it fades really quickly so this is the best shampoo that uh, slows down the fading as much as possible I love it um, I'm finishing other things but I'm really thinking of repurchasing it there's nothing that holds up to that talking about coloring hair I colored my hair um, a few weeks ago even a one week ago it was really needed I always use the, the L'Oreal Magie Rouge and I use the shade 5.64 mixed with their uh, peroxide developer I think I use the lowest uh, level because I my own hair is a, is a tone, a level 5, so this being itself a level 5 means that I'm not, I don't have to remove pigmentation. I'm just depositing color on top and I'm depositing to cover the grays, but also because my natural hair color is, I don't know, a cool tone brown that I don't like and I don't think suits me. So um, I like to have a reddish, warm red um, hair color. I realized that in this lighting or on camera it rarely shows up the right color I don't know or maybe it does but it looks very dark in the camera and it's not that dark moving on to skincare I finished a ton of stuff this month I'm so happy I used up my Paula's Choice Essential Glow Moisturizer SPF 30 um, this was a gift uh, or a pass me down from a friend to have me try it and I love this in pregnancy, I used it a ton then, but then when my hormones uh, re-equilibrated and I got oily again, this one was a bit too much for me. So I think there's still a bit left, but it, do it does expire. The date is November 21, so I stopped using it even though it was like down here. So I um, love it for normal to dry skins, not so much for oily skins. Another love of mine is the Good Molecules Silicon Free Priming Moisturizer. I've used this on and off for a long time because it doesn't have SPF. So I only use this when I uh, know I'm not going to leave the house and it's bad weather um, or uh, if I'm doing my makeup late in the evening to go out. <laughs> when do we do these things? Uh, anyways, this is what I use. I love it. I would definitely repurchase this one. I finished the Echo by Sonia Super Fruit Hydrator. It's in a bad shape because I used a ton of it. Um, I use this as my night cream. It's a nice night cream. Nothing special um, about it. They gifted this to me and I really enjoyed it and finished it. Um, that was a nice moisturizer. I also finished a bottle of my Ginseng uh, Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 40. I'll forever repurchase. Uh, I have two minis as backups and then I'm thinking of buying a full size again when I finish those. Uh, this is a great tinted moisturizer. It has the least coverage of anything I have. Right after this, there's Laura Mercier and after that, the Fenty Skin Tint, I would say. Um, but this is perfect for every day, for going for a walk, for I don't know, feeling good about myself. When my parents were here, I wasn't spending time doing my makeup because they slept in this room, specifically on that bed. So I didn't have spend any time to do my makeup. So I had this in my bathroom, plastered it on my, I used it as my SPF, day cream and tinted moisturizer. And I was really happy with it. Um, I think it's my third bottle that I finish. Really, really nice. I finished another refill of my uh, Pixi Glow Tonic. Um, I have a big, big tub that I actually just finished, I think, and then I refill uh, into this 100 milliliter uh, tub. And uh, yeah, I'm taking a break from, from AHAs right now, um, focusing on BHA because I have some, I don't know, congestion in the lower part of my chin and sometimes in my forehead that I'm, usually doesn't happen. So I'm focusing on BHAs. But uh, I keep using it. I've been using it for years. I finished a lot of makeup remover. So I finished my Buttercup Cleansing Balm by uh, Beauty Bay. I actually repurchased this one because it's under 10 euros. 
and it removes makeup well. It comes with a flannel uh, or a, a, a cloth to remove your makeup and a little spatula, which I've been using for the other, the, the rest of my um, uh, cleansers. So actually a good product, I would say, go for it. It's not as luxurious feeling as uh, Clinique Take the Day Off uh, or the, the Body Shop one, but it's easy to get because of Beauty Bay, you can, you, it chips all over. And um, yeah, I don't know, I enjoyed it. And after that, I decided to finish my uh, minis of the Clinique Take the Day Off. I had purchased this one, I think, when I was in Spain two summers ago. I think it was two summers ago three summers ago wow 2019 then september 2019 because i needed it and uh, this one was still uh, full so i just finished these they were old and i love this i just can't get myself to pay the price 25 euros that you pay for the full size of this um makeup remover is something i go through a lot and it's not the, the particularly the most important step of my routine uh, it's it's important to remove the makeup, but it's not the one that has the most actives and goodness for my skin. So I finished the Paula's Choice Super Hydrate Overnight Mask. This was in my uh, project pan. I finished it just in time for the end of the year and this was sent to me by the brand. I love this. I liked it. It was a really good hydrating mask for oily skin. It's not nourishing, it's hydrating, which are two different things because it doesn't feel thick it doesn't feel um, heavy on the skin, uh, so maybe it's not enough for um, more dry skin types, but for my skin, it was really nice. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's in a gel formula, which was really nice. Um, oh yeah, one more makeup remover that I used up and actually really enjoyed is the MAC Cleanse Off Oil. So good, expensive this one as well. Um, oh, actually, there's still a few drops in there, um, but it's really, really nice. And this was one of these, their gift with purchases uh, or samples that they send you. But this was really nice. I was really surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did. I finished a mascara and I finally threw my mascara primer. This one is old, but uh, I had been trying to get as much as possible out of it because it's out of stock everywhere around me. I finally found it on Beauty Bay, so I'm waiting for it to come in the same order I ordered the backup of the of the cleansing balm. Um, yeah, they don't sell it in my drugstores anymore. And this is the Maybelline Sky High mascara that I've been using uh, for quite some time. I, it's my second empty tube, I believe. And uh, yeah, both favorites. Uh, definitely recommend them. I finished another of my wild deodorant refills. I went on a rant in my latest haul and retrospect about this, and in my Black Friday 2020 haul and retrospect. In short, it's too expensive. <laughs> I think each of these comes out at like 13 euros and they last a few months and no, I have to pay taxes and import and everything uh, from the UK with these. So no, I am done with these. I still have one or two to go through and then I think I'm gonna uh, give up. Some nail polish uh, products, not polishes, that I finished. The California Mango Cuticle Oil, I'm tossing because I think it's over. Uh, I bought this in the US in 2017 at Sally's. Oh, how I miss shopping for cosmetics in the US. Uh, really good cuticle oil. I was passing it on in the little bottles to then have um, more easily. And then I finished the Sally Hansen Nail Growth Miracle Serum. I used it as a cuticle oil, but um, there's really nothing in there anymore. It was very old, so I really wanted to finish it. And I finished my uh, favorite top coat, which is the Sally Hansen Insta Dry. I have another one already on the go, and uh, I really like this one. It's quite small for nail polish. How much is it? Nine milliliters, and a normal nail polish is, I, I think, 15, isn't it? Oh, no, 13.5. Anyways, it's like... A third less than usual so I actually finished it whoever finishes nail polish top coats and base coats yes and the final item that I finished is a body and this is a, the Garnier Ambre Soleil After Sun this is a gradual tanner and I enjoyed it I buy these every year uh, before going on holidays to use on holiday after I am out in the sun 
it really is a quick absorbing a really nicely hydrating uh, body um, moisturizer and then it also has a gradual tan on it I really like it and uh, I will repurchase it every summer and that was the end the end of my monthly roundup a lot of chatting but because I finished a lot of stuff and I had a lot of favorite things and I tried a lot of things I hope you're still here hanging out with me I am trying to get as many videos as possible out for the end of the year so that I can wrap up this year in terms of project plans and declutters and things like that. I hope you're enjoying the amount of content that is coming your way and that you'll have something to watch during the holidays. I do that a lot. I watch YouTube during the holidays because I only celebrate one day here with or two days with my husband's family and then uh, um, I already celebrated in December with my family when they came here at the beginning of the month uh, so I have some time to catch up on YouTube for my favorite people if you want to stay around and hang out for all this uh, month of crazy content don't forget to subscribe or make sure you subscribe like this video if you liked it and uh, I'll see you in my next one bye guys <laughs>